Hi everyone, I'm Cinder9. Welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy 1. Uh, Dawn of Souls edition. So, here we are at the Giant's Cave. That's what they call it here. Okay. Hi! You have Star Ruby? Give me Star Ruby. I let you pass. Okay, here you go. Nothing tastier than rubies. And the giant happily goes away. Yay! And then we get attacked. Sure! We'll take care of this real quick. That's why you need the star ruby. Please make sure you grab the star ruby from the cavern of earth after you beat the vampire. Now you may be wondering, why is this important? Well, because you need to get through this cave to get to another person that will give us a very important item. We'll just beat up these real quick. Right now you're on the other side of the cave, which is the only way to get to this area. As you can see, it's completely blocked off. Ambushed. Well, new enemy, you missed. <laughs> hyena Dawn. Okay, I think it was just hyena in the uh, NES version. Whatever should go down fairly quick. As you saw, there was a cave on the map. That's our destination. These enemies should not prove to be a problem for your party at this point. Especially if you fought on the whole uh, Giant's Road type part. Sage's Cave! I don't think there's anything in these now. Hello! So you're the ones who defeated the vampire, eh? But he was only a servant. The beast corrupting the earth crystal looks far deeper within the cavern. Here, take the staff with you and use it behind the vampire's chamber. Here we go! You obtained the earth rod. Uh, in the NES version, it was just the rod. It was just a rod. Restore the crystals to grace. And we will. Our first step will be going back to the Cavern of Earth, or the Earth Earth ca Cave, and defeating the real threat that's there. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cut here and meet you back at that stone tablet that we couldn't move before. So, see you in a bit. Okay, here we are, back at the Cavern of Earth, Basement 3. Let's use the rock. Would you look at that? Now we can go forth. Okay, Cavern of Earth Basement 4. If I remember right, in the NES version, it got darker at this point. Like, the actual... Uh, like, everything would be would be more dark, which was cool, because it felt like you were going deeper in the cave. It was like, oh man, and then here's the evil presence. It really set the, set the atmosphere that, oh, okay, now... Now we're really getting to the source of the darkness. It was really cool. Oh, no, no. We'll just use uh, Dia. It's cheaper and gets the job done just as well. And we'll save Saiyas MP. <coughs> Speaking of saving MP, I got a lot of potions while we were, while we were out. Uh, cure potions in the old version. They heal 50, uh, 50 HP, so you'll want to get a lot of them, but with all the cash you've got from fighting in here, they're not really that expensive. They're only 50 apiece, and you can always go and get more money in here. So I've already used quite a few of them. 
uh, getting here just to save as much of Ruby's MP as I possibly can. Uh, mainly for this part. We have some treasure chests here. Ogre Mage. Were they still Ogre Mages? Maybe they were blue ogres. Like these were green ogres. They may have been Ogre Mages. Uh, as the name suggests, they can cast spells. Uh, they're always my priority to die first. Then we move on. If I remember right, they know things like uh, protect to up defense. Uh, things like that. A staff. Ambush, great. Blink, they know blink, which is annoying. Uh, that helps them uh, avoid future hits. But we're going to try to hit him anyway. There we go, good. Blink just gives him uh, a, a lot of dodge. So after he casts Blink, if you miss, don't be shocked that you miss. There we go. That's a lot of money. Sphinx. Another new enemy. I don't remember them too well, honestly. Don't seem to be too dangerous until they cast something to prove me wrong. Maybe paralyze, maybe they can poison. Give a lot of money, though. Speaking of money. Money. And more Sphinx. Okay. As long as they don't ask me a riddle, I should be in pretty good shape. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Oh, grab this. A lot of money! So there we go. Got a lot of money from these treasure chests. And we got a staff. Which is just a normal staff, as you can see. Something to sell. Now, if you're worried about the boss, you can always come back after you've beaten him. Come back and get that, get those treasures. Uh, this is a good tactic. If you okay, I'm gonna go kill the boss, make sure that's done, and then I'll come back. It is something you can do. This is especially useful in the NES version where you have limited spell cast. Yay, level up! 28 HP, strength, agility, stamina, luck. 7 HP, agility, stamina. 5 HP, 17 MP, strength, stamina. 2 HP, 21 MP, awesome. No stats though, but just a lot of, uh, a lot of MP, which is good. Ambushed as long as Ruby doesn't get paralyzed. They are trying, I will give them that. And that's that. Potion. Now, as you can see, your Black Mage will more than likely have very low HP. That's just the name of the game with them. So keep a close eye on their HP. Let's see. I can find the way out of here. I think there's one more treasure room. Or maybe it was just that one. I remember there being a lot of treasures on this floor. So that may be just the only one and I'm... I'm wrong about that. Is it there? We'll just, we'll just try to kill them off. Of 
paralysis. Alright. A lot of bats. Let's see, what's up here? Wizards, great. Uh, psycho demons. <laughs> But I was, as I was saying, as I was saying earlier, if I if I remember this correctly, it may have been another another dungeon. I'm pretty sure it was this one. That when you got to the lower floors, it, it got darker. And so, as especially as a kid, you know, your imagination really kicked in. And it was. Oh man, it's darker here, you know, that's the, the darkness that uh, the the sage talked about. That's the, you know, the, it's, it's just, you know, the, the, the permeating darkness is here and it's, it's overwhelming and it's snuffing out the light or that you're you're go actually going deeper into the into the cave, so there's less light. It was just really neat. Oh no, there was another treasure. Room. I just really, really enjoyed it. And that's something that really stood out to me. And it's something. I'm the first person to stand up and go, "Yeah, I'm glad we have, you know, better graphics." But something that's that happens with better graphics, it's just about the only downside that I can think of off the top of my head, is sometimes you lose that that imagination. And this could just be me waxing poetically on my younger years as a gamer. But and I like I said, I love graphics. Uh, the graphics these days are just phenomenal in video games. They're they're breathtaking and I love it but the one thing you lose is you lose that whole imagination and it, that could be me just being older as well but like I said when you were in here and the place got darker oh man you know that's darkness we're actually going deeper it, your, your imagination could really really help add to the atmosphere a uh, mithril shield. Oh, by the way, before I continue on that topic, there is uh, some treasures in that giant in the giant cave. If instead going to the to the stairs, you go south. There's a room with some treasures in it, and one of them is a mithril helm, which I'm wearing. Uh, it gives you a little boost of defense. Hello. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff. Now's a good time for fire. For fire too. Oh, you took that almost 200 damage. You guys are tough. As we sh as we should know, we've seen them before. But am I the only one that feels that way? I know there are some of you that have, that are commenting, and as always, I really appreciate that. That uh, maybe played the old the old NES version is what it sounds like, or you're playing this version. But. Am I the only one that feel that feels that way? I probably am. Like I said, I love graphics. I'd much rather have the graphics we have today than, you know, earlier graphics. <laughs> For sure. But sometimes you lose that, uh... That ability for your imagination to help make the environment. And you don't need that these days because if the video game developer does it right, you have the graphics to show the environment. <laughs> I don't know, just something to talk about while I bumble around in this place. I could pull up a map, but eh, that kind of takes away from it, I think. Here we go. From the natural, how you would naturally uh, just explore. And I'm trying to remember all of this, but uh, 
I don't think this is right. I think you go, you keep going up. Anyway, I believe this is the final floor. Anyway, so we should be hitting the boss soon. Oh no. Yeah, this is it. As you see, there's a big orb there. I don't remember be it being an orb. I think it was like just a little spot on the ground, but that's the boss. <laughs> so make sure you're prepared. And I'll save even though I typically wouldn't be able to save. You couldn't save in dungeons in the NES version. Who speaks to me? Huh? Hi. I am he who feeds on the power of Earth. Or maybe it was just him standing there. It wasn't the it wasn't the orb. I will not be disturbed by mortal men. I am the Lich, fiend of Earth. Well, bring it on, Lich! Oh, you look... They, they... He looked similar to this in the NES version, if you look up a picture of that. But, uh... We were talking about graphics, I really like the graphical enhancements. Alright, here we go. Our first fiend. As he said, he's the fiend of Earth. So you can assume there's gonna be more fiends. This is a, uh... Tougher fight. Attack, attack. Um. We'll cast Null Shock, reduce lightning damage by half, because if I remember right, the Lich does know uh, the two spells. He knows uh, Fire 2, Lightning 2, and Ice 2. Or Fire, Thunder, uh, uh, Blizzard. Anyway. Uh, we're going to use slow, reduce all num uh, all foes number of attacks. Or actually, we'll use slower. Uh, we'll use the bigger version. When he does physical attack, he can hurt. Oh, miss. Great. As you see, your attacks not doing a lot. Oh, I really like the way they made the null. Uh, the null work. That's look. That's cool. So if you want to punch him hard with. Uh, with abilities that yeah, with your physical attacks you're gonna need spells you're gonna need spells like haste to double the number of attacks and then temper to raise attack that way you can get through his very substantial defense there it is ow that hurt more than I remember it protect Attack, attack. We'll use Cure. Actually, we'll use or to restore all HP to everybody. Now, if you really want to damage it, we'll use Temper just so I can show it off. There we go. Good. And then you, there you can really see the damage. He also knows some status effects like sleep. Ha! Ah, missed. But if you really want to put the hurt on on the Lich, Fire 3 is your best bet. Now I wouldn't have wasted the spell cast with slow or slow 2. You would just use Fire 3 as much as you can or Firaga. This will really damage him. Here we go! Love the way that looks. See, that does as much as the warrior completely decked out. Now, sometimes his defense fails and you get some good damage. Sometimes it doesn't, but to be sure you're getting good physical attack damage, you really need to use uh, haste and temper. 
I will cast Protect. Now I could cast it on Leo as well, but what I'm going to do now, since I showed that off, really the killing hits in this will come from Psy and just spamming Fire 3. Use all your casts of, of Fire 3, shouldn't be no problem, and then just some physical attacks and that'll end. Be very wary of his spells, that's really what's going to get you if he decides to just spam them. Your White Mage will be very handy in that regard. If everybody's HP is up, you can also cast the uh, A spells, such as the anti spells, anti lightning, or in this game, null shock, null fire, or null blaze. And if you've picked those up for your white mage, that'll really help lower. Yay, everybody cheer! That'll really help. Oh, hey, Earth Gift Shrine. I guess that thing's gonna open now, because you're dead. Bye! Huh. Uh, the, uh, no spells will really help out. This is the altar of Earth, from which the power of Earth flows forth. Yay! Step on that, and it's an easy way out. And the same thing was in the NES version. It was a quick way out. Which is good, because you probably used a lot of resources just to fight the Lich. So again, recap. Heal spells will be very important. If you have the Null spells, they can help negate his damage if he casts the right ones that you've thrown Null up for. So Null Shuck, if he would have used Lightning 2, that wouldn't have hurt as much. Or Thundara. Fire is your really your best bet here. Especially since you have Fire 3. Or you should. Your Black Mage should be able to cast it. Throw every one of those you got. And then haste temper to finish the jump. Or you can haste temper early in the battle like I did just to get some physical attacks. That's what your warriors are going to do. But sometimes the attacks don't do too well. Watch out for the spell damage. Keep at him and he'll go down soon enough. As you can see, one of the crystals, right above where it says Cavern of Earth and right below where it says uh, our time in the game and our money, is lit up. I love this. It was the whole point of the journey is to light, you know, restore light to the crystals. And every time you saw that a crystal was, uh, was lit up, in the NES version they looked like orbs, even though they were crystals, they, they, they were uh, round. Which was neat. So both games have had it, where uh, both versions, I should say, I should say, that when you actually beat a boss and restore light to a crystal, it shows you that you've restored light to a crystal. You get that sense of accomplishment, and you can see it. That's great. Now, with that, we're going to head back to Melmon to see what they have to say. And we'll need to journey to the next crystal. Well, you can. And I'm going to. The reason I say that is because you can sequence break in this game. As you can a lot of older games. Uh, even newer games you can, but it, ha it happens more often in, in older games. Uh, people found, found ways to sequence break. And you can sequence break in this game. And become much more powerful than you should be. As if I needed a further power boost in this remake. <laughs> After playing the old one and having all this spell casting, this is, you know, way easier to me. Now, what do I mean by sequence break? If you know anything about uh, Final Fantasy, or you've been watching my last dream LP, you know there's something spe special that the characters can do. You can do that right now. Now, it was not intended for you to do it right now. <laughs> but you can. I'm not going to. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to sequence break. If you really want to know, I'm sure there are plenty of Let's Plays out there that have. 
I'm going to go through the game as it was intended, or at the very least, the way I did it the very first time. Which, which felt kind of the more traditional route. So, saying that, what we're going to do next is talk to the people here. Restore the Crystal's Grace. Warrior's Light. Yes, we are. Restore the Crystal's Grace. When are you supposed to tell me where to go next? Try to leave the cave each rocks. Hi. You can see it, that's great. When are you supposed to give me the hint on where to go next? <laughs> Just a farmer, thanks. Uh, there's the guy talking about the wise man. Hi. There's some and Varus coming back. Yay! Heard something that the ancients possess something with the power to make a ship float in the sky. That'll be later. Long ago, a prosperous civilization thrived in the Northland. Now it's fallen into ruin. I think that's where we're going next. Stop by your father's shop. So the Earth is returning to normal. You can't see it, of course, but they say it is, and that's great. We'll cross the bridge. Yes. Earth crystal must be shining again. Yep. Long ago, Melman was a beautiful town blessed by the richness of the earth. Oh, one more thing that I uh, didn't mention. And you see, I think they took the NPC out. There was an NPC in here, or maybe I needed to do it before, I needed to find him before I killed the vampire. But you know there's no, uh... There's no item shop here, right? And in the NES, NES version, there's a uh, clinic where you uh, heal your your party. Uh, you resurrect them if they if they die. But it's broken, and one of them makes the comment that the vampire destroyed them. That's why there isn't one. Uh, thank you to Autobot Jazz for reminding me of that. We didn't find the NPC here. It may be in this version. I may have just missed it, or it may have been taken out, and you're just like, why is there no item shop? That'd be a shame if that was the case. But that is why there's no item shop. There actually is a reason for it. The vampire destroyed them, which... That was a nice bit of detail in that game. Uh, in, in, in this game. Don't just not have an item shop, you know, because you want to make the game harder. Give me a reason. You know, other than, well, I just wanted to make the game harder. No, there's a reason here. Now, it may it, now behind the scenes, it may have been, yeah, we want to make this part harder. But story-wise, give me a reason. And they do. They tell you that the vampire destroyed them, which sounds like something the vampire would do. So uh, I, I like that, and it's something I really wanted to point out, because there are little details like that that the game does does well. That sometimes is lost. Just little details like that are kind of lost. Sometimes, and I'm glad the game paid attention to it. So I've saved three times. Obviously, I'm ending the episode. I'm just... Hands went to, you know... Continue to do stuff on the option screen. I'm going to buy some more potions. Because they're really handy to have. And they save your uh, white mage's MP. And next time, we'll be heading to a new destination. Now, like I said, you can... You can sequence break here. And if you really want to see how that's done, I'm sure there are tons of LPs that have done that. But I'm going to take the traditional route and not sequence break. I may check the Earth Gift, sh Earth Gift Shrine out. But since it wasn't in... In the NES version, that's the main reason I'm doing this, is to uh, have some fun playing Final Fantasy 1 and comparing the two. I might not go to it. To be completely honest with, with all of you, I haven't decided yet. <laughs> but, uh, regardless, not taking the sequence break route. Um, now, it is very tough to do, because you're going to be going to places that you shouldn't be going to yet. There's, uh, 
very tough enemies. Like I said, you can find find some walkthroughs or LPs, I'm sure, of or walkthroughs, either word or video, <laughs> of how to do it or what you're supposed to do. But uh, yeah, that's that's not, that's not something I'm going to do. I'm going to I'm gonna take the like I said more traditional route. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, hope you had a lot of fun. I've kinda of rambled the past few minutes. Sorry. <laughs> Next time we'll be at a different place. And see what's going on there. So until then Again, thank you very much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this Let's Play. I hope you're having a lot of fun. I'm Cinderay9. Remember to shoot for the stars and take care, everyone.